Welcome to Seattle. For those of you just joining us, with Sean Farnham, Roxy Bernstein with you. Good start here in the Pacific Northwest between number seven Gonzaga and Washington. The guards early for Gonzaga have been terrific, especially Nolan Hickman. Yeah, Nolan Hickman, uh, who has been shooting the ball so well from beyond the arc over the last four games, has come in and carried that through tonight, and he continues to shoot the ball well from beyond the arc. Three of four, four of six overall, and 11 points for Nolan Hickman to really spark the Zags' offense. A team right now that's shooting 57% on the road over halfway through the first half, but we just saw one of the best dunks you're going to see all day long. Kepnong has been outstanding, physical. He had an offensive rebound and a putback, and then he just did this. Look out. Catch it on one side, the emotion, the slide, the fist pump. He provides so much for the Washington Huskies in regards to their energy. And when you have somebody that plays with that toughness, that fight, it's easy for you to step up your game. So the purple out, that's why the Huskies are wearing purple here at home tonight. And the Zags going with the whites. But Gonzaga's had their domination over the Pac-12. 16 straight wins for the Zags against Pac-12 teams. That's a streak Washington is trying to break tonight. And the last time that a Pac-12 team beat Gonzaga was at the Kennel in December of 2015 when the UCLA Bruins went up to Spokane and got a win. Tony Parker was on that team. For the UCLA Bruins. Is Kevon Looney there too then? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. But that was a rare Tony Parker, really good performance, by the way. <laughs> One shot for Frank Kepnong after the second foul on Braden Huff. And Washington, the Huskies are looking for their first win over a top 10 team since 2018. And Kepnong gets the and one free throw. And that pulls the Huskies to within four. I can't lean on dogs because they're both dogs. Good point, Roxy. Yep. Could be confusing if I say dogs. Got the Bulldogs and the Huskies. Grant E.K. And the miss inside the rebound. Here comes Corin Johnson for UW. The lob for Kepnong and the tip in Frank Kepnong. Well, how hard he is running from rim to rim right now is just so impressive. He plays great position defense at this end of the floor, not allowing to give up space for E.K. And then at the other end, able to tip it in. Graham E.K. with the left hand. That time he got buried a little bit more. But at least he's not fouling, and Mike Hopkins can live with that. Well, but he can't live with turnovers. And that is the seventh turnover we've seen in the first half by the Huskies. Plus, his a little forced fadeaway jump shot on that possession, and then just runs the floor, gets out in front of the guard, and goes up with one hand, able to finish. You know what's crazy is before he picked up basketball, well, his mom is a black belt in karate. He took up karate, and he was a tennis player before he became a basketball player. Can you imagine trying to pass him at the net? <laughs> I bet you he's great at pickleball. Do you pickleball? I haven't played pickleball in a long time. I have some friends who just absolutely love pickleball. Either that or their spouses love pickleball. Keon Brooks Jr. for the Huskies. I still stick to the tennis court. I don't play any tennis. I'm I don't want to see Frank Kepnong at the net. Serve and volley would be very intimidating. Fair enough. Two-point lead for Gonzaga. Nolan Hickman with 11. Graham E.K. with 10 to lead Gonzaga's Anton Watson drains a three. Well, Washington led by 11 from Kepnong and 8 from Paul Mulcahy. Moses Wood lines one up from deep. Corin Johnson, the offensive rebound, throws a what? wild shot. What? And it goes in. How did that go for Corin Johnson? <laughs> Luck on the side of Corin Johnson right there. Nolan Hickman high off the window and in. How entertaining and how much fun has this game been? 
39-34 Gonzaga. Both teams up above 50%. In fact, Washington shooting 61% from the floor. They talk so much about the connectivity of Gonzaga at the defensive end, but Washington has been able to execute and get what they want. Frank Ketnong in the key. And a foul as Graham E.K. got him on the arm. Here's the good thing about that foul. It allows us to all step aside and just pause for a second Take a and show breath. you this. What are we watching? What is that? You know, I listen, to, we, we talk about, oh, they practice creative shots. Nobody practices to turn your back to the basket, not even look, and just throw it up blindly over the top of your head. If they did, it would look like that. He heard a lot of this sellout crowd, some Gonzaga fans here tonight, voicing their displeasure about the foul call on Graham E.K. One more for Kepnong. In this series, by the way, Gonzaga has won each of the last seven and 14 of the last 15 from Washington. Rattles out from Kepnong. The last time the Huskies beat the Zags, was here in December of 2005. Kept on the defensive glass for Washington. Well, the effort in the first half by the Huskies, they've been dialed in to how they have to play. If that's eight turnovers. There, there's an eight to two turnover differential between these two right now. And if they took better care of the basketball, they'd have the lead right now. So Mike Hopkins, two-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year, year seven guiding the Huskies. And he is dialed in tonight as well as Anton Watson moves in. Finds the open Nolan Hickman who steps in. And a foul, we're going the other way. It's a push on Gonzaga going for the rebound. And that's the second on Graham Ike. We talk about rivalry matchups, and we mentioned Missouri, Kansas earlier on. BYU, Utah, we showed that. Great game by Gabe Madsen. Five three pointers, huge, huge win for Craig Smith. And a full house in Salt Lake City for that one today. All right, this is a, this is a near full house right here. This will be a huge win for Mike Hopkins and this program. They've handled and channeled the emotion of this first half pretty well. And a block in the second foul on Dusty Stromer of Gonzaga. And that's the seventh team foul, so the Huskies are now in the bonus. It'll be a one and one. Sunday on ESPN, the 10th annual Basketball Hall of Fame Women's Showcase. Doubleheader at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. First game at 2.30 Eastern. Lynn Robertson, number 11 Utah, take on the number one team in the country, South Carolina. And then number 24, North Carolina, and number 17, UConn. In between games, a 23rd annual WNBA draft lottery from Bristol. Oh, you get a chance to see Alyssa Peely, who's been putting up monster numbers all season long for Utah. Averaging 23 points per game. Such an important player for the Utes. Moses Wood hits both. First appearance for Jun Suk Yo, the native of South Korea, for Gonzaga. As EK on the bench with two fouls, Stromer on the bench with two fouls, Brayton Huff has two, and now here come the Huskies on the attack. Down two. Corin Johnson blocked by Jun Suk Yo. And an offensive foul is called in the charge. That's the third on Braden Huff with 3.35 to go in the first half. And you want to pull off the upset, you have to make some special plays. You have to play with emotion. You have to feel it, take it in, and then execute. And sometimes you have to have a little luck on your side. We've had both here in the first half, and it's a two-point game, Roxy. And patience to all those uh, we teased it, but we are switching over to ESPN 2 We'll get to Grady Gross uh, and you can see my outstanding kick later We should leave the kicking in your family to your daughter. Yes, very much so. Yes
I was awful. You'll want to see it, trust me. Our game summary so far, Nolan Hickman for Gonzaga leads all scorers with 13. Frank Kepnong has 12. It's been a huge factor for Washington. A little zone here by Gonzaga out of the timeout. With Anton Watson up top. This is a little bit of a smaller lineup, too, overall. Like no EK. Hoff is obviously in foul trouble. And the run out. Here goes Ryan Nemhard for the lay-in. As Patola was just talking about in the studio, it's now 11-2 in points off of turnovers here in the first half. Three zags in double figures, 13 for Hickman to lead everybody, 10 each for Graham E.K. and Ryan Nemhard. As Keon Brooks Jr. can't get the roll on the baseline, Anton Watson clears, here come the zags. But the foul's mounting for Gonzaga, that's why this smaller lineup is out there with Brayton Huff on the bench, three fouls. Two each for Graham E.K. and Dusty Stromer. Well, I like the zone, the last two possessions. Open, Ben Gregg, three. Collapse the defense with the drive and then find a shooter. Gregg had his feet set and dialed it in. Gonzaga's led by as many as eight. The lead is seven right now. Well, dribble penetration has hurt this Gonzaga defense in the first half. The zone has done a good job so far of keeping them out over the top and forcing them into contested shots. And the rebound ripped down. What a pass! Long pass. Watson in transition to Ben Gregg. What a pass by Anton Watson. Seven Roxy, we, nothing run. We talk about versatility and what he brings. It's feel, it's understanding. Full court dimes. Let's go. Husky. One more look at this last play. What a play by Anton Watson. Husky fans are used to seeing some great passing. Michael Penix Jr. was unbelievable all year, but how about this one? On the hardwood, it may not get any prettier than that. One hand flipper, the length of the court drops in and on a dime for Ben Gregg. Largest lead of the night for Gonzaga. Uh, the, the vision and the versatility that Anton Watson brings is just incredible. Moses Wood from deep, and the Huskies needed that. They forced a long closeout on the back line of that zone defense. Watson was just a step late. And now 2-3 zone from the Huskies which had been a staple for Mike Hopkins up until this year. Nolan Hickman on the baseline. How about 15 points in the first half? His season high was 19 against Syracuse. He might have that in the first 20 minutes here. And a career high of 20 last year against Santa Clara for Nolan Hickman. Final minute of this first half. Both teams up over 50% shooting from the floor. Moses Wood tries another three-pointer. The rebound, Ben Gregg for Gonzaga. And Mark Few tells him to slow it down for a second. Rare time that he's asked him to slow it down. They've done such a great job of scoring early and attacking in transition. Understand the clock is your friend here. Ten to shoot. Brian Nemhard. Back in his way in and a step back. And Keon Brooks pulls it down. The Huskies can play for the last shot of the half. Inside the final 20 seconds. How much fun has this half been, Roxy? Building has been electric. The teams have been fantastic getting up and down the floor. Great pace. This has been a fun half of basketball. The shots are being made. <laughs> You're talking about 56% shooting and 54% shooting. And how about a little bit more? to make you understand how much fun this game has been. The step back from Savir Wheeler to end the half and a six point lead for Gonzaga at the break. A, a little push, Anton Watson backs off. Savir Wheeler knocks it in. We got ourselves a six point game at the break. 48-42, number seven, Gonzaga with the lead. Looking for their 17th straight win over a Pac-12 team. Let's go to the studio and the halftime report. 
You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN in Seattle and a fun first half between number seven Gonzaga and the Washington Huskies. 48-42, the Zags lead it as we're getting ready to start the second half. Along with Sean Farnham, Roxy Bernstein with you. They got up and down, and transition was a big reason why the Zags had to lead at the half. Well, it's transition from what they were able to do defensively, and the Huskies were a little careless with the basketball, and they were able to exploit that and go against them with an unsettled defense, whether it was the block shot to a run out or the defense creating turnovers and allowing them to score. Gonzaga is as good as anybody in the country scoring in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock and a lot of that is because their defense the activity and their ability to attack and they were in go mode from the start of this game tonight and they have not stopped now the one thing that coach mike hopkins said is that frank kepnow could stay out of foul trouble and maintain his level of intensity over the course of this entire game that would be huge for his team well they went to the bracket and, and kepnow had zero fouls and his intensity I think you can see for yourself, it was pretty good. He has 12 points, a couple of block shots, and really has been the energy giver to the Huskies. The guards need to take better care of the basketball. And if they do that, the Huskies could win this game. If they turn it over at the same rate they did in the first half, it's going to be awfully tough. Moses Wood missing a three. Frank Ketnong on the offensive glass. And the Zags come away with it, and Nolan Hickman across midcourt. Pull up three in transition from Hickman. And there's Keon Brooks Jr. The rebound and Washington quickly counters. Xavier Wheeler tries to shovel it to Kepnong. It's intercepted by Anton Watson. And Anton Watson, he does a little bit of everything. And he just understands positioning where he's supposed to be and how he's supposed to execute. Paul Mulcahy clears the Watson miss. And now it's Keon Brooks Jr. attacking the basket for the Huskies. Well, Keon Brooks is too old and too experienced. Quickly back the other way and Graham E.K. will get to the line as the Zags, even on a made basket, quickly counter. Well, Keon Brooks Jr. out in transition. Dusty Stromer, the freshman. And Keon Brooks recognizes that and says, hey, I'm going to go after him and try to attack him right away. Ike, 79% from the line. And he misses the first, picked up two fouls in the first half. Ike, 10 points, a couple of rebounds. A couple of years ago, he was first team All Mountain West for Wyoming, then missed last season. Medical redshirt and transferred to Gonzaga. Remember, foul trouble, Huff with three, Stromer with two, E.K. with two. Zags led by as many as nine in the first half. Frank Kepnong missing the alley-oop pass from Sabir Wheeler, and then misses again on the jump hook, and it's Stromer the rebound for Gonzaga. Those are the ones you have to, have to be able to finish, Roxy. Graham E.K. lost his headband of the process. Offensive foul, a charge on Keon Brooks Jr. of Washington. So he went to the break with great rhythm, and so far to start here in the second half, neither team has been able to come out of the locker room and maintain their rhythm. We had a similar foul called in the first half that was Huff's, a Huff personal foul against Gonzaga. I think both those, by the way, both those charges, they, they could be no call. Especially the way the block charge has been called this year in college basketball is the jumper missed by Dusty Stromer. The Huskies quickly attack and Savir Wheeler to the basket, throws up a wild shot. He'll get to the line, a foul on Gonzaga as Wheeler went tumbling into the photographers there on the baseline. Third on Graham E.K. We'll see a lot of Ben Gregg here in the second half, and I thought he did a really good job coming off the bench. At seven points in the first half, he's at the scorer's table. He'll be the one that's subbing in. Xavier Wheeler, one for two from the line so far tonight. Well, E.K. goes to the bench, and it's a loss. 
of not just a headband, but him being able to be on the floor. I mean, a nice finish at that end of the floor, but you, you have to understand, I mean, I just mentioned the foul trouble in the first half. Guys were two fouls, three fouls. Okay, you can be aggressive, but you have to be smart. And Wheeler's aggressively attacking, and you're reaching and you're lunging. Well, it's an easy call. And then you're giving up points at the free throw line. Just over two minutes into the second half, and Gonzaga turns it over to Washington. So the Huskies, they have scored 80 or more in each of the last four games. It's the longest stretch for a Washington team. As Moses Wood missing a three Just since the start of the 2016-2017 season. Xavier Wheeler the steal. Darts up the floor. Good job in transition defense by the Zags. And the bump on Ryan Nemhard. Savi Wheeler right now is applying a lot of pressure off the bounce. He's drawn two fouls already here in the early stage of the second half by being aggressive and attacking. That was almost a five second call. Very close. Here he is again attacking. And Wheeler, the scoop, misses the lay in. And the offensive rebound, Ketnog. And the loose ball, there's Wheeler hustling for the Huskies. Keon Brooks missing on the baseline. The rebound tipped out to Dusty Stromers. The Huskies had some good looks that trip. Kepnong right now is rushing his shot attempts here in the second half. He's not getting his feet solid underneath him. He's not giving that strong base and allowing him. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he can do that, though. Fuels the break. Xavier Wheeler lost it going up. Back the other way. Here comes Ryan Nemhart for Gonzaga. And he tries to dunk it, and he's fouled by Kepnong. Frank Kepnog goes up and meets it at the square and erases it. And then this one in transition, they called that a foul. And I'm telling you right now, Roxy, that wasn't a foul. But what it has done, regardless if it's a foul or not, is this building is rocking right now. One more look at it, Ryan Nemhart hits the first free throw. I just think that's a good block. I mean, where, where's the contact? Where, where are you seeing the contact? Just being silent, Sean. That's a first in your career. <laughs> Emhart hits both seven-point lead for the Walton Zags. would agree. I bet you Bill's watching this. I know he's watching this. It's Conference of Champions. Let's go. And over and back call on Paul Mulcahy. And a turnover committed by Washington. All right, so we had outstanding rhythm and flow in the first half of this game. Now we just have a lot of emotion. Channel that energy and start to execute. And the same clip that we saw in the first half, I think, is going to be very pivotal. Who takes a breath and exhales first here in the second half? Gonzaga is used to being in these games, in this type of environment. Now, a lot of new faces for Gonzaga this season for Mark Few. For Washington and the Huskies haven't necessarily dealt with this kind of emotion yet. They've played some close ball games. They played a great game against San Diego State in Las Vegas. But let's face it, Sean, there weren't many people in the building that night. No, there were not. Nolan Hickman, the runner. And the Zags have matched their largest lead. Hey, Hickman's got 17. The shot selection from Nolan Hickman has been at an A-plus level all night long. He is 7 of 11 shooting, 3 of 5 from beyond the arc. Wilhelm Breidenbach in the game for Washington. And he gets rustled out of the way by Ben Gregg, who picks up his first foul of the night. 
Zags have matched their largest lead of the night. On the road in Seattle, they're up nine on the Huskies. The V Foundation Stuart Scott Cancer Research Fund honors Stuart's legacy by awarding grants to scientists who are addressing racial disparities in cancer outcomes and providing opportunities to researchers from diverse backgrounds. ESPN and the V Foundation are proud to support this fund in Stuart's honor. You can support as well by visiting v.org slash Stuart. Early detection is very key. Uh, if you need a colonoscopy, go get it. Uh, if you, anything you can do to get early detection increases your ability of survival so, so big. I'm actually having one on Monday. Good for you. You should. Anton Watson. I had this as their largest lead. I had mine last year. People, they, they, if you're over 45, go get a colonoscopy. It's very, it's very simple. Xavier Wheeler. Goes crashing into the key, and the loose ball run down by Watson goes off his leg, and it will stay at this end of the floor with the Huskies, and they'll put a fresh 20 on the shot clock for you, Doug. But the largest lead of the night for Gonzaga, the Huskies have missed their last eight shots from the floor. I love games that have rhythm, emotion, passion. We've had a little bit of everything here tonight. What a stop on a dime by Johnson. Corin Johnson with six off the bench. And like Nolan Hickman of Gonzaga, they're both from Seattle and both went to the Wasatch Academy out in Utah. Ben Gregg goes to the basket. He's got nine off the bench for the Zags. What a strong move. You know, such a noted three-point shooter, but his ability to be more than that Present on that drive. That was strong. That's a foul. Second on Ryan Nemhard. Ben Gregg size up, go into the body of the big, and then finish through him, extending up, shielding, and protecting the basketball. He's an emotional leader for this team as well. He understands the Gonzaga way and how it's done. Corin Johnson lines it up in the corner and buries a three for the Huskies. Fourth three-pointer for Washington tonight. You got a mismatch. Greg being guarded by Sabine Wheeler. Just go ahead and post him up. And Nembhard being watched by Wilhelm Breidenbach. And a foul as Gonzaga tried to take advantage of what you talked about. And then we'll get free throws out of it. Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2 from Cameron Indoor. Hofstra and number 22 Duke. The first meeting of Hofstra and Duke. Coming up Tuesday night, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. And one more for Ben Gray. You know what I love there is that they were going to struggle to drop it in. Nemhard was going to struggle to drop it in to Ben Gregg because Wheeler was staying on the high side so well. So Anton Watson lifts. And then when he gets to the top of the elbow, that's what creates that opportunity for that high-low entry pass. And Gregg, knowing help side was coming over, he just threw it up right away and got the foul. Anton Watson knocks down Keon Brooks off the ball. And that is the first on Anton Watson tonight. Spokane native Watson who went to Gonzaga prep for his teammates with Liam Lloyd, the son of Arizona head coach Tommy Lloyd, former Gonzaga assistant. Liam now plays for Northern Arizona. Well, Tommy's team, number one in the country. A lot of similarities in how they attack and how aggressive they are offensively to what we see out of this Gonzaga program. Out of bounds. And it's a Washington ball. Last touch by the Zags. It's Del Dre Carr, Kevin Brill, Ray Natilli. Officials, and two of them point Washington's way. It goes right there off the foot of Jun Suk Yo. All right, Frank Kepnong back on the floor for Mike Hopkins. 
and he has been such a factor tonight for Washington. Has yet to score so far, though, here in the second half. Xavier Wheeler open. Gets the roll. High off the window and back down for Wheeler. When you're shooting 24% from beyond the arc, it doesn't matter how it goes in. You just want to see it drop. <laughs> Huskies have gotten some bounces tonight, that's for sure. Frank Kepnong the rebound. Here come the dogs, or the Huskies, I should say, because the Bulldogs are the dogs also. I know, you've been really confused yeah, by that tonight. Yeah, it, it thrown me off my game, I got to admit, because it's such a crutch to use dogs. You see, sometimes when you're at home, you understand the soft spot of the rim. I'm not sure if this is what they dialed up, but that literally almost bounced over the top of the backboard. Instead, it drops off that top white line and falls through the hoop. And after we had the dog show at halftime, too, here tonight, which is fitting with Gonzaga taking on Washington. Look out. Too high for Keon Brooks Jr. The Huskies throw it away. Well, he was open, too, and Mark Few is irate that they allowed Keon Brooks to get to that, that lane and have that much of an open path to the hoop. That was Ben Gregg who missed that assignment on the backside of the zone. Gregg. Missing a good look at a three, and Keon Brooks the rebound. Moses Wood, three. And a timeout with 12.07 to go. The Huskies were down 11. It's a four point game. Everybody in that draft lottery is thinking about two words, Caitlin Clark. She hit 35 the other night to eclipse 3,000 career points. 3,000. <laughs> Anton Watson gets the roll in the key. I mean, think about that, Ross. 15th player all time to eclipse 3,000 points. And now the zone from Gonzaga. Keon Brooks in the corner, and he cuts the Zags lead in half. Keon Brooks doing a really good job against the back line of that zone. They missed him on the alley. -oop. That time he cleared out from left to right and got his feet set in the deep corner. Four Huskies now in double figures. Frank Kepnon leads him with 12. Nolan Hickman for Gonzaga leads all scorers with 17. And an open three and a foul as Moses Wood fouls June suk -yo of Gonzaga. And three shots coming up for June. Zags by three. You're talking about the Washington Huskies right now. You have to talk about football and you have to talk about the face that runs the place. Grady Gross, the kicker for the Washington Huskies. Grady, uh, your coach, Coach DeBoer, last night won the Home Depot National Coach of the Year. How much of that do you feel goes to your kick against uh, Washington State? I mean, not much. I, just, I try and do what I can to help, but it takes him to take that fourth and one, run a little end around and get his 20 yards. So, you know, his, his play calling and his help with the team all year has kind of just led us to that moment. So. Just glad I could finish it off. Okay, my man's being a little humble here. He hits the game winner against Washington State, if you don't know. All right, where I'm meant to be right now is going to kick this football through the uh, the uprights down here. Now, McAfee does this on college game day. All right, so uh, any tips you would give a novice like myself to be able to get through the ball? What are some of the keys? Give me two keys. One, make sure you hit the ball in the right spot. Okay, that's key. Where is the right spot on the ball? So if you're kicking the ball, the sweet spot is right about here. Okay. If you can hit it with the bone, the big bone on your foot, right about there, you'll get the right rotation and enough height to get it through. All right, this ahead. is not quite the apple cup kick, but let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's go. Oh, I would have been botched. They would have made fun of me. Herb Street, McAfee, where are you? You know where you are? You're covering the national semifinals. He's the actual one kicking for the Huskies. That's probably a good thing, because by God, that was pathetic. I'd make fun of you, but I'd probably have the same result you did. I was awful. Uh, no warm-ups. No warm-ups. Record can show I, I did not warm up in my attempt. That was my that one kick, and it wasn't good. But the story of Grady Gross, though, phenomenal. I mean, he kicks that field goal against 
Washington State, and then in the post game, he was awarded a scholarship. His family was so excited, they were all there, and he said it was a great moment. He said he'd like to have another moment down in New Orleans coming up in a couple of weeks. Tough fadeaway miss short by Frank Kepnon. Well defended by Graham E.K. Young man from Arizona that came up here to kick. By the way, uh, foul of a three-point shooter. That's the second time in our game we've seen that. The miss from Ryan Nemhard. Graham Ike keeps it alive on the offensive end for Gonzaga and then goes back up. And Anton Watson takes it away for the Zags. Watson across the key, draws contact. And a foul on Washington. It's on Keon Brooks Jr., his third. And you brought up Washington football. Well, a reminder, New Year's Day on ESPN, the college football playoff semis. The Rose Bowl has Michigan and Alabama at 5 o'clock Eastern. Then at 8.45, the Huskies and Texas in the Sugar Bowl. Winners play the national championship on ESPN in Houston, January 8th. College football playoff. One more for Anton Watson, and the Heisman was handed out earlier tonight, just so the Washington people are not mad at me. I voted for Michael Penix Jr. Way to play so to it wasn't crowd. my fault. What a play to the crowd, Roxy. I, I'm really looking forward to the college football playoffs this year. I think the matchups are great. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, there's been a great deal of controversy in the talk about Florida State. But as we, we get set for these games, I think both of the semifinal games are going to be a lot of fun to watch. Great dump down. Before the shot, the foul on the floor committed by Jun Sukio. And his first, but that is the seventh on Gonzaga. That puts the Huskies into the bonus and a one and one for Frank Kepnong. So big Frank, two for three from the line so far tonight. 12 points, six rebounds, a couple of blocks. All 12 of those points, though, came in the first half. They get him acting around the basket and finishing those emotional plays that he had in the first half. That opens up a lot more from the outside. Now, obviously, here in the second half, the Huskies have shot the ball well from three. One more for Kepnong. Kept on. It's both ends of the one and one and pulls the Huskies to within four. Ryan Nemhard penetrates. Graham E.K. Kept on. Got it. Somehow he got to that one. Frank Kept on down low. Pass it. Moses Wood along the baseline slithers in for the reverse, and the Huskies are within two. He had to pass that. He didn't really have a solid offensive move to be had there. But Kepnong making the positive play again. And now Xavier Wheeler ties the game for Washington. Timeout, Gonzaga. Roxy, I was talking about Frank Kepnong not scoring. He gets to the free throw line. It comes down the uh, other end of the floor and gets a fingertip on that one, which immediately leads to the other end where he reads the defense. Moses Wood moves well without the ball. He drops it off, and that's two, and then come right back down at the other end. And the deflection leads to the run out, and we're tied. Quick 6-0 run for Washington. The Huskies have made five of their last six shots from the floor. And the Zags, who led by as many as 11 here in the second half, the lead has evaporated, and the Huskies have pulled even at 66. We thought this game was going to be competitive. And talking to Mark Few, he said that this is going to be a tough test for the Zags. How about this? for how evenly matched these teams are tonight. 66-66 is the score. Gonzaga's 24 of 48 from the floor. 
Guess what Washington is from the floor? Well, I have the cheat sheet in front of me, but will you go ahead and tell everybody? <laughs> They're 24, 48 of the, from the floor also. 66 all, the Zags and the Huskies in Seattle. A full house on the shores of Mont Lake. And Washington coming in here, the Huskies are five and three. They have a win over Xavier. And their three losses have been by a combined 15 points. And all three teams they lost to are within the top 30 of the net ranking. Their losses have come in overtime to San Diego State. Colorado State on a neutral floor. They lost to Nevada. A win here goes a long way. I mean, there's games on your schedule that you know just have a lasting impact. The Zags have been here before, though. They've watched leads evaporate in some of their other games, and they've always responded. Nemhard cut off down low. Tend to shoot for Anton Watson. Drives off the leg of Kepnong and six on the timer for the Zags. Washington's doing a really good job of getting into gaps. On drives, they're trying to pinch, slap the ball away, and try to take away driving lanes. Because it was kicked, they put 20 on the shot clock. Graham E.K. goes to work on the baseline, gets the roll, and it gives Gonzaga the lead again. And that was a strong, strong move by E.K. 15 now for Graham E.K. Washington has led only once in this game when it was 3-2. Xavier Wheeler for the lead. And he's fouled on a three. Nolan Hickman will send Xavier Wheeler to the line. Three shots for the Huskies. Rule number one in basketball, you don't foul a jump shooter. They just did. Well, Gonzaga's over on the eastern side of the state. They made the trek over to Seattle, which they'll do again next week when they'll play UConn at Climate Pledge Arena on Friday. There's the distance, but we have a game. Two-point lead for the Zags. Now, EK with a strong move underneath one of five Zags in double figures, and then the foul on the three-point shot. We saw one at the other end of the floor for the Huskies, and now we see it for the Zags. And I was watching Bill Walton's game, I think they said that Utah fouled four times, five times maybe, on three-point shots in that game. Like you just cannot foul a three-point shooter. And in, in particular, you look at June was the one fouled at this end. He shoots 13% from beyond the arc. At this end, you're sending Wheeler to the line to shoot three free throws. And he's a 24% three-point shooter. 13 points now for Xavier Wheeler. It's the second. One more for Wheeler. Tie game. Nimhard, Hickman, and Watson have been in all night, have not taken a breather. That's and now he's called for an offensive foul to third on Ryan Nemhard. Uh, position by Johnson, really good. Uh, he, he was there on the first one, and then anytime an official sees your, your arm go off and extend out from your body, Johnson sold it, no doubt. But when the elbow goes away from your body, officials are going to call that. Corin Johnson trying to give Washington the lead. Graham E.K. rebounds. Nolan Hickman for the Zags. Down the lane, the floater from Hickman. 
Graham E.K. on the offensive rebound. And a steal, but a foul against Washington. And it's on Corin Johnson of the Huskies. And that'll be free throws for Anton Watson as he drives in. The steal is clean. And they're calling that foul on the backside by Keon Brooks. They gave it to Corin Johnson, his second. And it's a one and one for Anton Watson. And he gets the roll and the Zags seesaw back in front. One more for Anton Watson. And the two time Washington player of the year gives the Zags a two point lead. Seven minutes to go. The Zags, 16 straight wins against the Pac-12. It's been eight years since they lost to a Pac-12 team. It's deflected out, and Frank Kepnong thought he was fouled. Six on the shot clock. I think that's a good swipe. Moses Wood. Three to shoot. Strip, Brooks forced up a three, and it missed everything in a shot clock violation committed by Washington. And that is awfully close to being another foul of the three-point shooters. As the ball was loose, Anton Watson stepped into him. Wasn't called. Washington wanted it to be called. Hickman, nice feed inside, but Frank Kepnon. Fourth block shot for Kepnon. Corin Johnson a trail three, and he missed everything, and it's pulled down by Anton Watson for the Zags. Every time the ball hits Antoine Watson's hands, you just everything feels calm and right. Hudson down low, the kick out open, Dusty Stromer. And he clanks that one, but Graham E.K. keeps it alive for Gonzaga. Nolan Hickman fires. And it goes over the top of the backboard, out of bounds to Washington. I think for this Gonzaga team, Dusty Stromer has got to be able to knock down shots from the outside on a consistent basis. And, you know, he had a great game against USC, he had 15 points. That's a big moment and a big shot. And he is 0 for 3 so far tonight. Gonzag has made just one of their last eight shots. And they've had some pretty good looks. Xavier Wheeler had nowhere to go and throws it away. But you leave your feet. Instead of jump stopping, you leave your feet and you turn around and just throw it out of bounds. That is a really poor possession. When possessions matter most late in this game, there's been 16 turnovers. The Zags have been able to capitalize on a lot of them throughout the course of the night. Valuing the basketball, understanding time and position and how you want to play. A player with 700 career assists. That's, that's one he's going to want back. And the Zags going to try to capitalize coming out of this timeout and try to see if they can extend the lead. To me, I play through Anton Watson again. Whether you, you elevate him and lift him to the top of the key and then have him dribble handoff action or become a facilitator from the, the, the forward position. If not, I'm posting him up and again, I'll play through him off the block. Two point lead for number seven, Gonzaga. Here in Seattle against Washington. Tuesday night, 7 Eastern on ESPN2 from Cameron Indoor. Duke. Blue Devils take it on Hofstra for the first time. And Speedy Claxton. You talked about Tyler Thomas for Hofstra. 23 and a half points per game. So Duke's got to try to slow down on Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern. Nolan Hickman off one foot, too strong with the banker. 
And Moses Wood the rebound, and the Huskies control it. Keon Brooks Jr. And a foul will send Brooks to the line. And it's the third on Dusty Stromer of Gonzaga. Nolan Hickman was outstanding in the first half. Playing very confidently, very aggressively, and finishing with great efficiency. In the last couple shots that he's had, he has not been in that same rhythm. First trip to the line for Keon Brooks Jr. tonight. 83% on the year. 12 now for Brooks tonight. Second team all Pac-12 last year for Brooks, and he knocks the game at 70. Fifth time this game has been tied. Frank Kepnong was out of bounds when he grabbed the basketball, stays with Gonzaga. A little bit over dribbling. Both guards on both teams right now. They're dribbling themselves in trouble and limiting the opportunities that they have. There's Watson along the baseline. The fifth block, a career high for Frank Kepnong. What a night he is having. To think about it, just over a year ago, he tore his ACL in their first Pac-12 game at Oregon State last December 1st. And he left that one short in the rebound, Anton Watson for the Zags. 11 rebounds now for Watson, along with four steals tonight. Three from Watson is too strong. And chasing it down, Moses Wood for Washington. Four minutes to go. 70-70. Number seven, Washington. Or rather, number seven, Gonzaga in Washington. Xavier Wheeler. To the basket, off the window, and the Huskies have the lead. There's not a single person in this building sitting down right now. And a three, too strong from Ryan Nemhard, and Xavier Wheeler rips the rebound away for the Huskies. Huskies have outscored the Zags 12-4 in the recent minutes to take their largest lead of the night. Here's Brooks. Xavier Wheeler weaves his way in. Five to shoot, the lob for Brooks, broken up by E.K. And Brooks can't save it, it goes to Gonzaga with 2.46 to go. How many times have we had possessions like that, though, where you're like, hey, momentum's starting to go to the Huskies, and it turns out to be a turnover or just an errant pass? The final 2.46 of this game, how many turnovers Washington has can determine whether or not they're going to win this contest. Can't give the Zags extra opportunities. Yeah, we're not the only ones who have headphones on tonight. It is loud inside Alaska Airlines Arena. 72-70 Washington leading Gonzaga with Sean Farnham and our ESPN crew. Roxy Bernstein with you from Seattle. The Zags have made just one of their last 12. And Washington has taken a lead and looking for their first upset of a top 10 team in five years where Gonzaga has a winning streak of 16 straight over Pac-12 teams that's on the line. In fact, they haven't lost to Washington since December of 2005. Adam Morrison was on that Gonzaga team. That's how long it's been since the Huskies have beaten Gonzaga. Well, and the defensive transition for the Huskies has been good here, forcing Gonzaga 
to not get as many opportunities in transition early in the shot clock. The Zags are 0 for 6 from 3 here in the second half, shooting just 26% from the field. Nolan Hickman, and he stepped on the sideline, and Gonzaga turns it over. And think about that number, though, 26%, 0 of 6 from 3. In the first half, they were 5 of 9 from 3, and overall shot 56% from the field. And Nolan Hickman has not been the factor he was in the first half for the Zags. And a lot of that goes to the defense of Washington. And they have been dialed in here. And, and an offensive foul is Brooks. And Nolan Hickman says, hey, gas bags up there broadcasting the game, I'm, I'm contributing. And he draws the charge on, on Keon Brooks. That's his fourth. Well, the question is, where are you going if you're Keon Brooks? I mean, Nolan Hickman standing right in front of you. Ryan Nemhar drives, finds an open Dusty Stromer. Kept alive by Watson. Ben Gregg thought about it. That was a heck of a catch by Ryan Nemhar. And the offensive foul, Ryan Nemhar the charge. His fourth foul with 1.48 to go. Just trying to do a little bit too much. And we've seen it twice. That off, off arm, and you dip your shoulder, and you extend off with the off ball hand. They're going to call it every time. Ram E.K. comes back for Mark Few. Xavier Wheeler. Eight to shoot for the Huskies. Moses Wood, a tough step back three. And the rebound chased down by Anton Watson, his 13th rebound of the game. Ryan Nemhard in the paint. Had it stripped, loose ball. And a foul is called on Graham E.K. of Gonzaga. Or is it on EK? Ray Natilli, the official. Yes, it is EK. And that's the fourth on EK. The last couple of possessions, Ryan Nemhard has just been trying to do a little bit too much. You know, there he gets so deep. I I'd say go off a two and just shoot the floater over the top. Two shots in the double bonus for Corin Johnson. He's two for three for the line tonight. Nine points off the bench. Johnson's played majority of the second half for Mike Hopkins. Now Paul Mulcahy spent a majority of the second half on the bench. One more for Johnson. And he gives the Huskies a four-point lead with just over a minute to go. Huskies down the stretch have outscored Gonzaga. 14-4. They trailed by as many as 11 here in the second half, and they have scored six straight to go up four. 68 seconds remain. What has impressed me most about the Huskies tonight has been their ability to defend, in particular in defensive transition in the second half, Roxy. I mean, they've taken away a lot of that early transition looks that we were seeing happen in the first half. Hasn't been as often in the second half at all. 74-70 Washington. All right, if you're Gonzaga here, your offense has been a little bit out of rhythm here down the stretch. Where's Mark Few looking to go? Well, uh, and the problem is nobody's been able to make a shot from beyond the arc in the perimeter. You don't need, obviously, a three-point shot on this possession. To me, the trusted hand is 22. Whether you're going to ask him to take the shot or distribute the ball, Anton Watson makes the best decisions out on the floor.
Graham E.K. in the lane and lays it in, makes it a two-point game, and a foul is called. It should have been. An and one for E.K. And it's on Frank Kepnong, his third. He flew out of nowhere, uh, but there was definitely contact coming from behind. You watch him fly into your screen. I, that is an easy, easy call. Was not called up by the official underneath. It was called actually by the official near side to us. Deldre Carr on the sideline made the call. EK one for two from the line tonight. Rattles in one point game. One minute to go. Now Washington has to value the ball. Severe Wheeler has got to be patient here and poised. Playoff of two. Eon Brooks and a foul is called and Brooks will go to the line Watson whistled for his second No, that's gonna be on Dusty Stromer You're right he's fouled out That's his I take foul. it back. It's his fourth foul. Yeah, so won. four on Stromer yeah, Stromer just reaches in So he's got four EK has four and Ryan Nemhart has four for Gonzaga Brooks now three for three from the line. One possession game regardless of a make here. And the Zags are out of timeouts. And a timeout for Washington leaves Mike Hopkins with one. Well, I think this is a good timeout by Coach Hopkins. It gives him an opportunity a, to get all of his defense set up exactly the way that he wants it. But maybe even more importantly is to calm his team and understand what they can do once they get the ball. Right? Because anticipate a foul, anticipate a trap, anticipate if they make a shot and it's a two point shot, full court pressure. Talk through all the scenarios that could happen here. Now, if you're Gonzaga, you're also sitting there saying, thank you for the timeout. We're going to set up exactly what we want to do at the offensive end of the floor. The last couple of times when they've come in this possession, they look for EK to set the on-ball screen at the top of the key, and they're diving him right to the rim. And they've had trouble making the three here in the second half, which you've highlighted. Down three with 41.8 to go. There's still a lot of time, which means the Zags don't necessarily have to go for a three, even though they're down three right now. Gonzaga's Mage is one of their last 10 shots from the floor. 76 73, Washington. If it's a rhythm three, take it. If it's not, be aggressive, get to the basket. Grammy K has got 18 to lead the Zags. Nolan Hickman with 17 tonight. Here comes Ryan Nemhard. Here's that. Watch EK on the dive. And he out of bounds. It. Washington ball. That was a very difficult pass. And almost an uncertain pass from Nolan Hickman. Watch as he dives here. He sees it, hesitates, and then tries to throw it. I, there's, there's no window there for the ball to really be delivered. Jun Su Kyo checks in. Now the full court pressure. Gonzaga not fouling yet. And they lob it across to Brooks. And a foul will send Keon Brooks Jr. to the line. 23 and a half seconds remain. Second on June Sukio. And two shots in the double bonus. And Keon Brooks Jr. is four for four from the line tonight. Again, the Zags, no timeouts. We're 23.5 seconds away from a day of depth in the Pac-12. Utah beating BYU. Washington and Coach Hopkins getting a signature win if they are able to close this thing out. Arizona with a huge win. One more for Brooks. 
Remains perfect to the line. Here comes Nemhart. Braden Huff launches a three. And the rebound, Moses Wood. And a jump ball, Arrow Gonzaga with 8.9 to go. It's still a two possession game. Right? So now on your out of bounds call, you want something either going to the hoop or a wide open three. Uh, that's your two options, right? But it's, it's gotta be extremely quick here. 8.9, Ryan Nemhart playing it in. Finds Watson in the corner, forces up a three. And the rebound, Keon Brooks Jr. grabs it, that'll do it. And for the first time in five years, the Huskies have knocked off a top 10 team in the 16 game. Winning streak over the Pac-12 for Gonzaga's come to an end across the state of Washington and Seattle. 78-73, Washington knocks off number seven, Gonzaga. And they are storming the court here in Washington. It, it's unbelievable when you think about Mike Hopkins and comes into the conference and was two-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year. In, in the recent years, it's been tough. It's been a struggle. And they've needed to have a victory that mattered, that cut through. And tonight, they were able to accomplish it. In the second half, they locked in defensively. They won this game not because of their offense, Roxy. They won this game because of their defense and the ability to get back in defensive transition. For Frank Kepnong to stay out of foul trouble and be able to maintain his level of aggressiveness throughout the course of the night. Gonzaga midway through the second half had a six-point lead. Washington closed the game on an 18-7 run, and they win it 78-73 over Gonzaga. Five Huskies in double figures led by 17 from Keon Brooks Jr. So the Huskies upset number seven, Gonzaga. For my partner, Sean Farnham and our ESPN crew, Roxy Bernstein saying so long from Seattle.